Today on Locked On Canadians, it's the end of the season, but first there's a couple of points and goals we got to talk about. Your Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 1052. It is the end of the Montreal Canadian season. We're about to discuss it. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. My name is Laura Sab, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined by the wonderful Scott Metlove. Habs eyes on the prize, as always. We are your podcast we're free and available wherever you get your podcast as well as on youtube as part of the locked on podcast network where you get your team every day um and today was the last day that we have a game to recap but don't fret we've got tons of content planned we don't actually have an off season we just keep going all year long there's going to be so much stuff to talk about about the habs so make sure you're subscribed scott tonight's game went almost as much as i expect almost exactly how i expected it to go stupidly uh, uh yes very strangely uh and with a with a shootout loss <laughs> it is one of the rare games where both groups where both fan bases are absolutely furious with the officiating for probably all the right reasons it was uh not an ideal night as the officials have switched fully into playoff mode uh, including what ended up resulting in the game tying goal. At the end of the day, that doesn't matter all that much, anyways, as we will get to in this show. But if you're gonna go out, you might as go up. You might as well go out with two fun back to back games, back to back NHL debuts, back to back NHL debut points. A huge point from Lane Hudson in this game. If you're gonna go out, go out fun. And this game. The past two nights have been fun, stressful, that it felt nice to play a game that felt meaningful, even if it wasn't for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, but across the board, this might be the most fun I've had watching two games uh, in back to back in a long time for the Habs this year. And there, I was about to read a tweet out, but then I realized we were going to talk about that in our third segment um, about the chaos that unfolded tonight. Uh, so let's kind of talk about how, like, what kind of a note does this end the season on? I don't like people are like, oh, it ends on a low note. Oh, I, do, I don't think so. I feel like this game was one of those games where it was meaningful. It did have consequences and the Canadians did their utmost best given who they have on the ice who is at their disposal um and you know what was at stake for the opponent like i do think that a consequential game like this where the canadians were still a factor i still feel like i i, I saw positive signs i saw hope for next season i saw things the canadians can work on meaningfully in the next off season I liked a lot of what I saw in this game in that this was a team still playing without their number two center, uh, a top prospect winger who was out with an injury. Uh, their defense without Caden Gooley, without Arbor Jack Eye, which we'll have to talk about Jack Eye at some point in this because, oh my God, what an idiot. <laughs> uh, and yet they're with a team. Detroit's playing with everything on the line and the team to strike first, again, the Montreal Canadiens, for the team to continue to push them. They get scored on, they come back and score again to continue to make things happen was the Montreal Canadians in this. And I'm going to, I'm going to dare to look at natural stat trick for this game, which is probably going to be a mistake. And again, it was the Canadians and Red Wings were kind of their even split. And then Detroit turned it on in the third period where they got that late goal, which shouldn't have been a goal anyways, but that's doesn't matter the season's <laughs> over. It doesn't make it it doesn't make an impact in literally anything except for where the Habs might draft. And the Habs just hung with them there. Scoring chances 24, 23 in favor of Detroit. High danger chances 11, 11. Expected goals 3.07 to 3.08 at five on five. Canadians had a four uh to three goals advantage for uh at five on five. Detroit scored with the extra attacker there. 
again, if you're going to go out, go out in a strong way here. And the young guys stepped up. Nick Suzuki was, again, incredible. Cole Caulfield gets his 20th goal of the season's left. Kofsky gets his 20th goal and his 50th point, which is such a huge milestone for this team here. I thought Alex Newhook looked incredible yet again. And this is a game where it the, the counting stats aren't going to be pretty because the Canadians spent a lot of time sitting back in their defensive zone defending. And this game's ending with, and I'm looking at, you know, the expected goals for Cole Caulfield, the top, Slavkovsky at the top, Armia at the top, Newhook at the top, Logan Mayu at the top, Nick Suzuki at the top, Brendan Gallagher, Justin Barron, Jaden Struble, and then it gets below the 50% mark. This is everything I wanted to see. They didn't roll over on a back-to-back with their backup goaltender with another new defenseman in the lineup on, in the last day of the season. Uh, Harris out, Kovacevic out, Hudson in, uh, Logan Mayu in, that you have uh, Jaden Struble in. You have changed a lot of that defensive lineup. You are playing with a thin lineup. You lost Michael Pozzetta. He played 25 total seconds and then left the game with an injury and is done for the night. How unfortunate that you get to game 82 and then you get injured there. <laughs> like, it's like He was the one kept in. Yes, Olinen was a scratch for Tanner Pearson tonight. And Pizzetta gets, so they're playing down a forward with two brand new rookie defensemen who have played a grand total of now three games between the two of them. And you hung in there with a team that is fighting for literally everything they've got. And yeah, maybe they could have lost in regulation or this or that. Everyone who is openly cheering goals against, like I, I get it, but also that's not for me. I like sending them out. I like sending the fans home happy. I go back to a couple of years ago where the Habs secured first overall, and then just blew out the Florida Panthers. Sure, it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it felt good anyways. So it's maybe not Caden Primo's best night ever. Two of the goals that went in against him were. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to say uh, one of which he just kind of stopped playing. It looked like, but it was a weird game. Very clearly the off seasons on everyone's mind here. I'm kind of happy with how this season ended here is that this team didn't just roll over and collapse after the trade deadline or at any of the other points this season. Even when things were bad, this team bounced back. This is a, res- a team that's more resilient than we've seen in years past. And it feels like, If they can shed a contract here or there and make a move to bolster that top six or middle six there, this is a team that might surprise a lot of people next year, assuming also the goaltending stays where it is next season. And I think that is their goal should be kind of where Detroit was and Buffalo was last season. You should be hunting for a playoff spot at this point, not at the last game of the season, but going into that back part of the season there. This should be a team hunting for a playoff spot. It should be a team in the conversation. And obviously, if the injuries do allow, um, I do think the Canadians will be that kind of team. Uh, I do feel that they will be, you know, a pesky team that just won't go away until potentially the last couple of games. Um, And we are going to talk, obviously, a little bit about that in a little bit. Uh, But one final thing, like, I think if, if you were to summarize the back half of the season, Scott, I would say uphill trajectory. What about you? I'd say uphill is probably the right team is, is the right term as well here. This is a team that went through a lot. Again, they haven't had their, their expected second line center since the second game of the season, which also Chicago fans taking a weird lap about Kirby Doc's injury is gross and weird. And your whole franchise should be burned to the ground anyways, but that's for the off season. (laughs) <laughs> this is a team that had people You're making step summer up plans, Scott. <laughs> up a little bit. I have a whole rant about that because I saw something while I was on Twitter today, which made me mad, which is a thing. That, that was I your first my, mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was my first mistake. That's something I've said to my therapist several times too. And he tells me just close the app. But <laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> I look at the back half of this season. You have Brendan Gallagher, 16 goals. Yol Armia, new career high in goals. You have Slavkovsky, who was unstoppable. Caulfield, Suzuki, Matheson, fantastic back half of the season. Montembeau and Primo secured their spots as NHL goaltenders. Even when Primo has an off night, he's good to be, he's more prone to be good than be a schedule loss, basically. Kind of like playing Jake Allen was for the Canadians here. And to me, that's all the growth you need. The, The sticking point is that Josh Anderson wasn't where he needed to be. Simple as that. But the back half of the season is a lot of guys 
finding their game on a team that was thin on players. Jake Evans was playing second line center for a lot of this season for a guy who's usually been the fourth line center and he played well in that role. A bunch of things lined up that assuming good off season of rest, come back into next season and this team takes what they learned this year and applies that for a full season that you should see this team really make strides next year and not, okay, they're not dead last. Like they improved. They're the best bad team in the NHL kind of thing to, oh, this is a team that you have to take seriously night in and night out. I look at it, 16 overtime or shootout losses. If half of those go the Canadians way, they're, they're further up the standings. Obviously you would like to win some of these just straight up in regulation anyways, but this is a team that with a flip of a coin in a lot of these is a complete in a completely different spot this season and is changing the perception of this team overall. We'll still take the draft position for this year, uh, but we will expect to say goodbye to it uh, or this high next year. Uh, but speaking of next year, a couple of young defensemen made their debuts in the last couple of games, and we're going to focus a little bit on that in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. But first, this episode is brought to you by Game Time. Let me tell you about our friends at Game Time. Are you ever looking for tickets and you can't find any and you're scrambling and then all of a sudden there's such a huge markup and everything is overpriced? And I'm going to tell you that it is not, it does not have to be that stressful to get tickets because you have Game Time. What is Game Time? Game Time is essentially our best friend. It is an app that it's so easy to use. You can find tickets even at the last, last, last minute. It is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. Obviously, it is the summertime. Baseball is something that you want to see. And you can, you know, pick out any kind of game or concert or any event, like, you know, even, even a comedy show. Check out the app and you will be able to find last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, and it's so, so easy to find. Last minute deals are just, it's just a no brainer. All in pricing is essentially their way. So if you're trying to buy tickets, you're not going to have a bunch of hidden fees because let me tell you, I hate hidden fees. They have a lowest price guarantee because honestly, check it out. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you do find cheaper seats. You can also preview your seats. You can just look at where uh, you're going to sit and what the view is like from there right through the app. And it's so, so, so simple. So you should take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, Scott, it has been uh, a year of growth for Logan Mayu in the AHL level. Uh, the team has come out and said that they've had regular contact and check-ins with him over the course of this past year. The NHL had cleared him to play uh, in the NHL, uh, and the Canadians felt comfortable giving him his shot in the last NHL game of the season. Um, and now he's back to Laval to help them with the very crucial games that are coming up. Uh, and in his first game, he did score a point. So yeah, it's been, uh, we, we broke in the middle of yesterday's episode is that, Hey, Logan, my is getting called up, which is a reward for his really strong AHL season. Obviously the rocket not playing until Friday and Saturday this week gave them that opportunity. Caden Gooley wasn't good to go because he said he suffered a head injury when Nikita Kucherov, uh, gutlessly checked him from behind into the boards and the NFL and the NHL Department of Player Safety did nothing because they are gutless cowards, and I hate them. I will literally redacted, redacted, redacted uh, to your redacted. But he came in tonight, and he had his moments where, hey, again, an adjustment period, but he got his first point on the opening goal of the game. Long stretch pass to send Brendan Gallagher and, uh, my apologies here, uh, Alex Newhook in there. It's what you want to see from him is that he didn't try to do too much. He kept things simple in this game and taking that, having gotten that taste of the NHL speed and everything that is going along with that should set him up very well for next season. The Canadians blue line is going to be congested again. You have 
at least eight or nine players who are going to be vying for, let's be charitable and call it seven NHL spots right now. A lot of people are going to need to take that chance to step up here. I thought his debut was about as good as you could have hoped for. They put him on the top pair with Mike Matheson, just like they did Lane Hudson last night. They threw the young player to the Wolves here. And I want to just the check his... with the with like arguably right now the team's best and most important defenseman. Yes. And I want to just take a look at the time on ice here. Uh, Logan Mayu played 21 14 tonight. Uh, Mike Matson played 27 32. David Savard played 19 28. Lane Hudson played 23 32 tonight. So, out of your all of your defensemen, Matson played the most as expected, and then Hudson and then Mayu in this game. You That's really a lot can't. Of you can't, and it's not like they were playing easy minutes. Like they were out there. Lane Hudson got some overtime power play time uh, and everything. It's everything you would want from them in this game. Uh, Nick Suzuki played 25 minutes. Uh, Slavkovsky just shy of 23. Caulfield 22 and a half, and then a lot of other players in the teen range. There, they leaned on their on their big lifters in this game, and for good reason. But at the same time, you know what? That's a debut you want, and that doesn't even we to transition into. Lane Hudson played a second NHL game tonight, and Lane Hudson from last night to tonight is somehow even better, and he got a point in his second friggin' shift last game, and tonight came out and just decided, oh, I'm also better than most players on the ice here. I watched him put Ben Sherratt into hell in a spin cycle in the offensive zone, and it was glorious to watch, and then he topped it. couple minutes later, gets a pass back at the point, gets it, and he just spin-cycled David Perron, throws a long-term NHL veteran. This is not a young guy. This is a dude who is, knows better and has seen this before, and he got error 404, please reboot your computer, mm-hmm. opens a lane, throws it at the net, Uri Slavkovsky tips it in, 20th goal, 50th point. I wanted to keep my expectations in check for Lane Hudson. I do, and I still do. But in the two games that I've seen of him right now, you put him in the offensive zone. The bell center has come alive every time he touched the puck in a way we haven't seen really since PK Subban as a defenseman. He touches the puck and you can hear that swell and that crowd noise. He touches the puck and people know cool stuff is going to happen. And more often than not, he's dipsing, he's doodling, he's deking, he's dangling, he's dipping, he's ducking, he's diving. <laughs> he is so much fun to watch that I cannot. He's Roy wait to... Kent. <laughs> he's he's here. He's there. He's every bleeping where <laughs> Lane Hudson. I cannot wait to watch him at the rookie showcase next year if he goes. And I cannot wait to see what he does with a full off season with Adam Nicholas and the Canadians training staff. He's special, and I know it is early. And I want to contain expectations, but Lane Hudson has that spe- he has that oozingness of special coming off of him. And if you're not excited about that, I don't know what else you can get excited <laughs> about with this team. Like honestly and truly, if you're not excited about that, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you're no fun at parties. <laughs> Oozing of specialness, I love that. Um, uh, longtime listener Andrew G uh, wanted us to spend the entire episode talking about Lane Hudson. Unfortunately, we can't. sure I'll do that. Wait. I'll absolutely do that. Wait, I was I promised I promised him that we would do a full episode on Lane Hudson at a later date because we do have to talk about other stuff today. But I did want to go back to you talked about how Lane Hudson uh, put. Uh, Ben Sherratt into a spin cycle and I don't know why I just envisioned him in like a, a a spin cycle in a washing machine and then he froze David Perron and I was like <laughs> and then I just imagined him doing the ice cubes like those rich people TikToks um but you know I think one of the things is that now that he has signed his contract uh the Canadians will be able to obviously um spend a little bit more be a little bit more involved in his development like there aren't any ncaa rules preventing him from from participating in things um and i personally like if this was his first two games like i i absolutely cannot wait once he's like a fully cooked nhler right like the talent that we saw on display the creativity that we saw on display the quick reflexes that we saw on display 
uh, tonight. I just, I can't stop gushing about him. And I feel like it's going to be one of those things where next year he's going to be on the up list every, every week uh, in the three up and three down um, or whatever version of it that we have. Like maybe we will just have a lane Hudson corner once a week. I don't know. That's, that's a question for next season, but in the off season, which is literally starting tomorrow, uh, we can start having full episodes about players like Lane Hudson there's you know I feel like the Yuri Slavkovsky season review is going to be two episodes long um, but because we are in the offseason we do encourage you all to send us topic ideas what do you want us to cover who do you want us to uh, try to get on the show we do want to talk to prospect experts all of that and do not forget our mailbag episode uh, is coming up this Friday you can send us questions to uh, lockdowncanadians at gmail.com leave them in YouTube on the Twitter but uh, sorry, LO underscore Canadians on the Twitter. But we still have uh, some playoff picture teams to kind of lo- laugh about and, and, and the chaotic well, end. Just two. Just, just two, two. Which is just very two. fun because their fan bases kind of deserve it. So Okay. And we will give them what they deserve in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. But first, Scott, I've got a question for you because I have been told that I'm competitive. How are, you, how, are you, how are you the one that's competitive on this when it, when you have me? <laughs> We're both competitive people, so that's entirely fair. <laughs> so both of us do have a competitive side, and that is true. Uh, and our competitive side are big fans of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it because it's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations. You can build up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends because I can charge my friends rent on my iconic properties just like classic Monopoly. But I can now also rob their vaults of riches for myself and leaderboards. Show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is, and I gotta tell you, spoiler alert, it is me. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go free now on the App Store or Google Play. All right, Scott, I just want to read, I just want to read a summary of the evening uh, from our good friend or uh, people we admire uh, greatly, James Duffy. So to summarize, Detroit scores with three seconds left to stay alive. Should have been an icing call, but yes, fine, go ahead. Scores until Philly puts pulls its own goalie in a 1-1 tie when they need a regulation win, then the cap score, eliminating the Flyers, the Wings, and the Penguins. It's... It's I, poetic. It's chaotic poetic. That's it, a good it, bad name. It, <laughs> I... I got a text from my friend, a Flyers fan, and we love our folks at Locked on Flyers, and like most of our actual Flyers friends, um... Who just said, thanks for nothing, to which I replied, maybe don't be so bad in the back half of the season. Why are you relying on a lottery team to do your dirty work for you? That's your own problem. And in a do-or-die game, the Flyers scored one goal, which is very Montreal Canadiens of them. In all those games Carey Price played going back to those series against Tampa where they either scored one or zero goals, and Carey Price had to be flawless. And I look at this and I go... You did it to yourself. You didn't trade for a goalie and you traded one of your better defensemen. You did this weird half in half out deal at the trade deadline. If you were in keep Sean Walker and go for it. If you're not going to be in burn it all down and start over. You can't 50 50 it because then you end up doing what you did here. And that's no place to be, especially when you don't know if torts is going to be back next year. Who knows with this coaching staff, And to me, it's like, okay, you did it to yourself. And then you have Pittsburgh who went out, fired GM last year, all this other stuff, brought in Kyle Dubas. It is a new era in Pittsburgh. Eric Carlson is a Pittsburgh penguin. You have all these other additions and you're crap. Sorry, you are crap in a season where you should have been better. A long expectations here. This is Sidney Crosby, Malkin, and Latang's likely last window of opportunity here. 
And to be quite honest, you didn't do anything with it. You 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 missed the playoffs. And I'm actually looking at their cap friendly right now because I want to see Crosby has next year left on his contract. And then he has a UFA. The Penguins really have no choice but to try and run it back again next year. Crosby is signed through next year. Malkin's got two years left. Brian Rust has four years left. Ricard Raquel has four years left. Uh, Riley Smith has next year left. Michael Bunting has two years left for some reason. Uh, Lars Eller has another year. Uh, and then you have Eric Carlson signed for another three years. You have Chris Letang signed for another four years. Marcus Pedersen for another year. And Tristan Jari signed for another four years. Plus, Ryan Graves is on IR. He's signed long, long term. Noel Achari's got another two years. You really don't have a choice except for trying to go for it with this core. But you're old. You just had a uh, one of the best seasons Sidney Crosby's had recently. A really strong year from a dude who is going to be 37 next year, which is a wild thought to say. And you needed all this help to get into the playoffs. And what did you do? Didn't do it. Yeah, you, you coughed up, and this goes to the fly. So you coughed it up to the Islanders, who were basically dead in the water. And then Patrick Waugh revived them like he's Jesus or something like that, which is a wild, whole wild thing there. I I can't wait to see what the state of Pennsylvania does this offseason because the Penguins need actual help, don't have the cap for it, and the Flyers are... Who knows? Danny Briere's bold. He likes to do things. He really likes to make you know make things happen. And right now, uh, you were a team without a goalie. You are right against the cap, as it is, and your team's pretty much set for next season. Maybe a few pieces here or there on defense, but you need a goalie. You need help everywhere. Man, uh, if I were Flyers fans, I'd be pissed to be quite honest, because you had it and then you lost it uh, like a lot like the Eagles this season and every Philadelphia team outside the Eagles winning the Super Bowl lately. Boy. Okay. That, that's enough of me making fun of Pittsburgh uh, and Philadelphia. Uh, New Jersey also sucks. So I'm just going to balance that out with just making <laughs> fun of them. You let the Capitals make the playoffs. Even the Capitals fans don't think the Capitals should make the playoffs. And that's what you allowed to have happen. Tonight. They have such a terrible goal differential. It it's it's okay. Hold on, I'm gonna go bring up the standings here. Uh, let's see, goal differential of teams in the playoffs: Florida plus sixty eight, Boston plus forty three, Toronto plus forty two, the Rangers plus fifty three, the Hurricanes plus sixty three, the New York Islanders minus eighteen, the Tampa Bay Lightning plus twenty one, Washington Capitals minus thirty seven. Teams that missed out, Red Wings plus four, Penguins plus five, Flyers minus 26, Sabres plus two, Devils minus 19, Sens minus 26, Habs minus 53, Blue Jackets minus 63. There is not a playoff team in the Western Conference with a negative goal differential, but every team that didn't make the playoffs did. The worst goal differential in the West is plus 21 for Nashville, and they're the first wild card team. Everything is setting up for whatever Western Conference team wins to just absolutely steamroll the Eastern Conference, and I wouldn't be shocked at that happening at all right now. I'm actually quite excited for the playoffs. Like, this is, you know, the third year in a row where we don't have to worry about our team and, and, and lose it. And, yes, it is – I always prefer making the playoffs and a deep run over not making the playoffs. But I'm, I'm excited to see – how crazy this is, but also like to talk about how far the Canadians are from this, you know, like we, we talked a lot over the course of the season, how, you know, some conferences or sorry, some divisions were hard and some were really a joke. Um, it feels like this year there was a lot more opportunity for teams that aren't all that great to be in the playoffs. Like it didn't feel like juggernaut years. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of like, you know, see how the Canadians would stack up. Um, and talk about it. But in the meantime, we also have so much off-season content planned for you. Starting from tomorrow, I have a very special guest who's going to be joining me for the Habs postmortem. Um, there's going to be tons of prospect talk. There's going to be tons of draft talk. There's going to be tons of, you know, free agency preview. We are really, really not done. We have special guests and we'll be going all year long. We do, you know, 
We do have fewer episodes in the summer, but we'll still be talking all kinds of Canadians. So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are free and available as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Uh, Make sure you follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. You can also send us mailback questions there. Uh, Please email us at LockdownCanadians at gmail.com. We love to hear from every single one of you. You can find us on social media. Scott is at Scott Matla. I'm at the active sick. You can also leave us comments in the YouTube. Thank you so much for listening and I'll be back with a special guest tomorrow.